When creating a Google Form, you are going to begin in your Google Drive. You're going to click on New, and you don't see Google Forms in your first choices, so you go to More, and here is Google Forms. The first thing I recommend that you do is that you name your Google Form. So I'm going to go up to the top corner and call this Student Submission and press OK. Now, notice that the name of the form here is the same as up at the top. It automatically put it as the name of the form. I can now change the name of the form down here at the bottom, and it will not change the title of the document. Right underneath the name, it has a place for form description. This could be for instructions for your students, it could be general information, um, but that is optional. Now, the first thing I want to show you once we get into the form is there are something called form settings here at the top. These form settings differ between your Google account, your personal Google account, as well as your Google Apps for Education account. I currently am in a Google Apps for Ed account, and you can see that it automatically checks this box that requires people within my Google Apps for Ed domain to log in to view this form. Now, when you have high school students or even younger students, sometimes they may sign into their personal account instead of their GAFE account when they're signing into the Chromebooks, or if they're using shared devices like iPads, the person before them might be signed into it and never signed out and the kid goes on and um, isn't actually in their own account. So I normally uncheck this box and I have to say okay. It just makes it easier. Um, however, if you did require them to sign in, you could automatically collect their district username. And some other options are to show the progress bar if you have multiple pages on this form so students know how far along they are. You can also make it so only one response is allowed per person, but that does require that you have them log in, so have this top box checked, and you can shuffle question order. Now there are some differences between the Google Apps account and a personal account. So notice that only on a personal account only has three these three questions or these three um, form settings. So it doesn't allow you to have students um, collect their login info or forced to be signed in with their SEQ or their um, personal domain accounts. So now I'm back to my Google Apps for Ed account. And you can see right here, it has a question that's opened. If you don't see it like this, um, it might be something like this untitled question. You can click on the pencil to edit or just click on the gray box. And here you're going to put in the question title. And this is going to be a form for students to submit work to me. So of course what I'm going to want first is the student name. So I'm going to type in first name. I like to separate names first and last so I can sort by either. And there's help text if you need any help text or any information for students to help them answer the question. Next, you have question type, and there are quite a few different question types. When I'm asking for name, I just need a text box. So I'm going to choose text, and I'm going to require this question. So they have to fill it out in order to submit the form. And then I'm going to say done. Now, to add the next question, last name, I have a couple different options. I can click add item. I can click on the little arrow to choose what type of item, like text. Or, or I can click on this duplicate, which will make another question that says first name. And it keeps all the same settings. It keeps it as text and required. All I have to do is edit and type in last. Oops, I must have pressed that a few times. So if I want to delete something, I can just click on the trash can. Now, the next set of information that I want for my students is I want their class period, so I can sort by period. Now, when I choose this question, I don't want it a text question because some students might type in first, some might type in one, some might type in who knows what. So I am going to make this a drop down list where students choose their period from a list. So I'm going to choose this one here. I could choose multiple choice, but if I have a list of seven different periods, it's going to make the question kind of big on the form. Choose from list, it's just a small area where they can then drop down. So I'm going to choose choose from list, and I'm going to put period. And here in the options, I'm going to say option one, two, three, oops. I'm going to type in all the different possible class periods. Now. 
There are some other options when you do choose from list multiple choice. I can go to pages based on answers. So I can actually set up multiple pages in this form. And if they chose answer one, they would then go to a certain page. If they chose answer two, they can go to a different page if I set that up. Um, so that's actually a really cool feature um, that's more advanced that we'll cover later. And um, I do want this to be a required question. So I can check required and then I'm going to say done. So see how it's just a small box that students will click on? If it was multiple choice, I can show you what that would look like. So I'm gonna switch choose from list to multiple choice and say done. And you can see how it makes it quite longer. So that's why I like the choose from list for this sort of question. Now, the next thing I want students to do is I want them to turn in an assignment. So I'm going to add an item and it's gonna be a text assign, um, text box or text type question. And I'm gonna say name of assignment or it could be number of assignment. There's lots of different ways you can do this. I'm gonna require the question and say done. Next, I want them to turn in the URL for their document for what they're submitting to me. So I'm gonna add an assignment and it's a text assignment, and I want this to be URL of student work. Now, sometimes students might turn in a document, but they forget like the .com at the end, if, they, if it's on a website. And so I wanna make sure that students actually turn in a real URL. So I'm gonna go to advanced settings. And what advanced settings allow me to do is set up some data validation, where the answers have to kind of fit certain criteria. So I'm gonna check data validation, and this was a text answer that they're gonna be um, turning in. It, it's a text is their URL. And I wanna choose where it says contains and say URL. So that means that it has to be a URL that they put in that box. And if they don't put in URL, it's gonna give them an error message and they can't mm -hmm. submit. All right, and then the last thing I want students to do is I want them to have like a description of their work. So I'm gonna go up to add item but this time instead of text, because I want them to write a little bit more than just a few words, I'm gonna choose paragraph text. And I'm gonna make that a required question as well and say done. Now, here is my form that I want to send to students. Down at the bottom of the page, I now have the confirmation information. And here it says your response has been recorded, but you can change it to whatever you want. It could be your work has been submitted. You can also type in a lot of information here. You can even put in web addresses and they will be hyperlinked so students can click on them when they get the confirmation page. I do like to keep this box checked most of the time to show link to submit another response because I want students, maybe they're submitting two different assignments, so I want them to see the link again to the same form. You can also publish and show a public link to form results. If you want students to see everyone's projects or blog pages that they're turning in, you can have it where everyone will have a link to see everyone else's work, but they won't be able to edit it. They'll just be able to see the links that were submitted on the Google form. This option here, allow responders to edit responses after submitting is great. However, it basically gives you a link and you need that link to go back and edit it. So if it's two days later and you didn't save the link, you won't be able to edit it. So it, it's helpful, but it's not totally useful all the time. All right, so now to see what our form looks like, I'm gonna click view life form up here at the top menu. And this is what the form looks like for students. Notice up in the top right, it says edit this form. If you give this form to your students, they won't have that option to edit it. I can see it because I created this form, so I have the option to click and edit it. And what it will do is it will bring me back to this page here. But our form was not very pretty. We can change the theme up here up at the top. And changing the theme allows us to pick some different images, fonts, colors, etc. So you can choose whatever one you want. Here's one with forks and knives, but you can also customize any of these. So if I choose customize at the bottom, I can change the header image and I can upload my own image that I might have, 
or I might pick images from here and there's lots of really cool ones. There's even some that are animated, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to choose this one here and press select and notice that it changes up at the top of the page. I can also change the title. So the font size, the font colors, whether it's left aligned or center aligned, etc. I can change the description, the question fonts, the help text options, um, form background, which would be the background right here. Instead of white, it could be a different color. Or I can change the page background, which I'm going to do right now. So when I change the page background, right now there's an image. It might be hard to see, but there are actually stripes here. So I'm going to remove the image. And then now I can um, either upload my own image or just add a different color. So I'm just going to add red as the background to kind of match with my form here. And now this is what my form will look like to students. If I need to go back and edit, I just click Edit Questions and I'm back here. The next thing that you want to see is when students are filling out this information, you want to view the responses. So you want the spreadsheet that allows you to see all of the URLs once they fill it out. So to view the responses, it's just right here. You can also find it in your Google Drive. So when I go back to my Google Drive, here is my student submission form that I just created, and here are the responses which is the spreadsheet right here. Now back at the form, something else that I can do is I can view the responses in a summary format. It will automatically make graphs for you, which is pretty cool. So if you go up to responses up at the top, it shows that I have zero. No one's filled it out yet. But if I click on that, I can choose summary of responses, and there's not really going to be anything right now. But here you would see some really great bar charts and pie graphs of the data, if it's data that can be added up. So it's pretty cool. Now, the last thing that you need to see is how to get the link to share it with your students. So on the top right hand side of your screen, it has a blue button that says send form. If I click on send form, there's a really long link right here. But what you can do is click on short URL, and now it will give you a short URL that you can send out to your students. If you had a group of your students, you could email them the form through here. Um, now, if you want to collaborate on creating this form with someone, you need to invite them, and it's a little different than in other Google Docs. So when I go on to send form, there's actually a link right here to add collaborators that I can click on. But I can also go up to File, Add Collaborators. And this is how you would then share editing rights to the form itself. You do need to make sure that you share editing rights to the form as well as share the responses which are on the Google Sheet.